Hey guys, this is Yoda, and this will be my very first tier list video. I've been getting a lot of questions on stream, like what should I play, what DPS, should I play Vengeance or Prod Pally, what healer should I play, what rogue spec, what mage spec, is Aug still viable? Uh, yes it is. So this video should hopefully cover all that. So Havoc uh, is still my number one DPS. It has been nerfed a little bit, like 4-ish percent, 4 to 5 percent AoE especially if you play Fel Barrage. Um, so I'd probably stay away from Fel Barrage, probably more Essence Break or Glaive Tempest now. Maybe still Fel Barrage, we'll have to see. But yeah, Havoc is definitely the best DPS still. It has, you know, Chaos Brand, good AoE damage, good single target damage, good low target cleave, just good everything. Also hard to kill, also has infinite leech. Um, so yeah, Havoc's number one. Possible meta, we've got Prot Pally and VDH, I think are the top two tanks. As for which one is better, um, so Prod Pally is really good at keeping the group alive on hard bosses. They have one minute sack, they have spell warding, they can randomly heal, and they have Diva Aura. But outside of that, VDH is better at literally everything. They are better single target damage, tankier against bosses, better AoE, AOE damage, they require less healing, they can do bigger pulls because they can both survive them and control them better with Silent Sigil. Uh, basically at everything except surviving hard bosses for the group. Like is they're better they're tankier against hard bosses, just that Paladin make Paladin makes other people tankier against those bosses. Uh, at literally everything else, VDH is better. Personally, I hate when I'm tanking and I just can't do anything when my group dies. Uh, so I prefer the Paladin a little bit more. Um, but VDH is probably the better tank, in my opinion. All right, uh, healers. We've got Rest of the Druid, <clears throat> Mistweaver, and Dispriest, in my opinion, are the top three. So Rest of the Druid has really good healing throughput. They have Mark of the Wild, probably the best source of Mark of the Wild by far. Uh, and they also have really good single target damage when they don't have to heal. A couple weaknesses they have is one-shots. So compared to the other top healers, Miss Rest of the Druid is the most susceptible to one-shots and also to your group getting one-shot. But if you don't get one shot, chances are Arrested Druid can keep you alive. I think they pair really well with Prod Paladin. All right, next we have Mistweaver. Uh, Mistweaver is the best that it's probably ever been, uh, especially in high keys. Their tier set gives them really good priority healing, like spot healing, uh, and just overall high healing throughput. They're also pretty tanky with three different walls, uh, and they can also invoke their Celestial. You know, both as a healing cooldown and as for a small shield to stop your group from getting one shot. And they also have all the monk utility that we've been missing for at least a year now. Like they have Ring of Peace, Paralysis, Mystic Touch, Detox, all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, I think Mistweaver is definitely one of the top healers. Next we have Disc Priest. Disc Priest's main weakness, I think, is that healing while moving. But, you know, as, they, as we play more and more, Disc Priest will start to figure it out more and more. Uh, and the best thing, the main strength that they have is that they're really good at stopping the group from getting one shot, which has been an issue on Tyrannical. So they have Fort Buff, they have Lenience, uh, and they also have shields, which they can put on relatively reliably. So Disc Priest is really good at stopping the group from getting one shot. Overall DPS and healing throughput, I think healing, they're probably the worst of the top three. DPS throughput while healing, they're probably the best, so there's that. Uh, and they're really good at stopping the group from getting one shot. So I think Disc Priest may potentially have the highest ceiling of all three, but I'd put it, you know, in the same tier. As for possible meta DPS, uh, I have Augmentation, Demon Lock, Sub Mage Spec, and Outlaw Rogue randomly. So we'll go over Augmentation Evoker first. Um, a lot of people are saying, I have the opinion that Augmentation should just be here with Havoc, as, as in required for every key. Uh, personally, I think the group DPS is a little bit lower with Augmentation Evoker, and the profile is a little bit more bursty, like you have high highs and lower lows. In particular, some bosses will summon adds every now and then that need to be DPS down. Uh, let's say like Yalnu, the last boss of Everbloom, and I think Augmentation Evoker is not as good against those bosses. But in terms of you know keeping the group alive, they're still the best. They still buff the tank and the healer. They still have rescue shield every minute. They still have rally when they use their wall. Um, 
So yeah, I think they're definitely one of the best, but I think it's possible to do high keys without augmentation evoker now. No one has yet tried um, and succeeded. So we'll see how that theory goes, but we'll leave it here for now. Demo Warlock has been popping up as one of the best Warlocks recently, or as one of the best DPS recently. Um, they do dam really good damage, like pretty much Havoc level damage, especially after the Havoc nerf. And they have really good cool utility, like they have Curse of Tongues, they can slow attack speed of the boss, for instance Wakerest second boss, very useful. Um, Curse of Tongues is very useful, especially in Everbloom on the Council boss. Cool gateway skips, they can do uh, fear, They're one of the talents they have makes fear similar to Imprison, as in you can use it for skips. Um, so Warlock has a lot of really cool utility. I wouldn't quite say it's at the level of mage utility, but uh, it is really useful and cool, and they do good damage, so I'm putting it up here, possible meta. I've been playing with Warlock quite a bit recently, and we do feel the loss of utility when he's not there. Uh, next, Mage. As always, Mage is one of the best Mythic Plus specs. You can't go wrong if you play Mage. Um, Arcan Intellect buffs the Augmentation, buffs the Healer, buffs the Warlock if you're playing with one. Really good. Uh, they also have so many personals to go through. They can solo every affix. They're immune to stun and the Wakecrest bosses. Uh, in terms of damage, I think it's probably not as good as Havoc DH or Demon Lock. It can be as good, can be better if the mage is like a really good player compared to the others, or if they're more geared or something. Uh, for overall DPS, I think Frost is the best, but Fire has some applications where priority damage is required, or in particular in Galakron's Fall, like the last boss, you can play Fire Starter and do insane damage to that boss. Um, so I think it's Frost or Fire. I haven't seen anyone play Arcane. I also don't know anything about Arcane. Um, but yeah, I think it's Frost or Fire. Usually, ideally, as a mage player, you can play both. Um, so yeah. Then there's Rogue. Uh, I think on Tyrannical, you can just play Outlaw every dungeon. The target cap does definitely hurt, but again, it's Tyrannical trash, so hopefully someone else, like the Demon Hunter maybe, will just take care of the trash for you in uncapped pulls. Uh, Havoc, or sorry, Outlaw Rogue is very good at one thing, at least on the boss, and that is not getting one shot. So they play super high verse. Uh, you can play double faint, and with faint float like a butterfly, you can have faint all the time. And you can also play elusiveness, and then you also have a 4% stamina node. Maybe it's 5, I don't remember. And you also have 5% damage reduction when you use pistol shot. So against the one shots, Outlaw Rogue is by far the best, I would say the best spec in the game, uh, which is why I'm putting them up here. And they also have pretty good damage, you know, target cap aside. So I think Outlaw is possible meta on Fortified. You may want to put on some daggers in some dungeons, uh, like Everbloom or Throne of the Tides. Uh, you may want to put some daggers on to do uncapped AoE damage. Um, but especially on Tyrannical, I think Outlaw Rogue is one of the best specs in the game. All right, so that's possible meta in my opinion. Next we'll go to good. Um, we pretty much have just the rest of the tanks other than Brewmaster. I think every tank this season is capable of surviving the highest keys, except maybe Brewmaster. I just haven't seen that many play Brew. Um, the main pro issue is that Prot Pally and VDH just bring something extra. Like VDH has eight year silence, and they also have the highest throughput. Paladin can keep your alive, group alive on hard bosses. These tanks can just survive, but they can't do any of that stuff that, that you know these two tanks do. Um, Prot Warrior does have Spell Reflect, which is very cool in Wakecrest and Everbloom. You just do like DPS levels of damage when on those bosses where Spell Reflect is useful. So that's good. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's enough to move them up, uh, up the tier. All right, next we have these two healers. I think Preservation Evoker has the healing and damage throughput to make it to the meta. But the problem, main problem is that they just don't have a raid buff. Like, look at all these healers. They have... Mystic Touch, Mark of the Wild, Fort Buff, and Lenience, and all the stuff that stops from getting one shot. Prez Evoker is, can definitely keep up in terms of throughput, but it's just missing the the raid buff utility. So I'm putting it down here. I guess it's not really down. I'm putting it here. Um, HPAL, I think, has the opposite problem. They have really good utility, like they have Melee Kick, all the Paladin stuff that you really love, Bop, Hodge. Divora. Um, 
But from what I've seen and heard, all the H Paladins are saying that their healing throughput is missing. So you tend to get heal checked uh, in Wrath situations, like in Galakrond's Fall, uh, especially like the dragons that pulse AoE, uh, or maybe the dragon, or maybe the boss right after those dragons, or even before. Um, so H Paladins have been complaining about their throughput, but the utility is definitely still there, so I could see it making a splash. It has already made a splash uh, in some high keys. For DPS, uh, I've seen Enhanced do really, really strong prior damage. I could definitely see it being played in top keys. The main problem, I think, is, I guess, twofold. One, they are target capped, uh, so it's kind of a bummer on in some dungeons. And then also they are a bit squishy. They have, like, their wall... They have Earth Ellie and that's it. After that, they need some babying. So I think that's their main weakness. I could easily see it being played in top level keys though. Assassination Rogue, unfortunately, has been the victim of PI. They're getting PI pretty much all the time in raid, and as a result, they're doing top damage. Uh, and as a result of that, they got nerfed. Um, unfortunate that Blizzard couldn't see that it was just PI making them good. Um, those nerfs have carried over to Mythic Plus. In terms of your overall DPS, it's not that big a deal. It's like four to five ish percent single target, and then some also in AoE because you lost spider damage. Um, I think that makes them worse than Outlaw on all tyrannical keys, but in Fortified, especially if your tanks doing uncapped pulls, I could definitely see Assassination being good. Uh, all right, BM Hunter. Uh, they definitely do good damage. Even post-nerf, damage is still very good. The main problem is just that Hunters have tragically been neglected by Blizzard in terms of utility. Hunter's Mark is pretty much a joke in Mythic Plus. It doesn't really do anything. Um, especially when compared to a Mage. Like, Mage has Arc Comparing Arcane Intellect to Hunter's Mark is very, very funny. Um, comparing Mass Barrier to Hunter having nothing is also pretty funny. And then also Mage can blink all the stuns. Hunter can't. Um, so yeah, the main problem is just the utility gap between Hunter and Mage. Uh, damage is definitely good, though. Unholy DK recently got massive buffs. Uh, if there is a spec that uses the new Legendary well, I think it'll be Unholy DK. Uh, and I also think Unholy DK will be very strong in MDI because they do extremely good uncapped AoE. But I think they do low single target if they use their cooldowns on AoE. We'll have to see. have not seen enough people play Unholy DK, so, you know, that is a bit low there. Moonkin uh, has been the DPS Druid of choice. Uh, as with every other season, you know, there's a Demon Hunter in the group, there's a Mage in the group, there is not always a Warrior or a Monk. So, you know, comparing Moonkin to Feral, Moonkin is just 10% damage up by default. Uh, and they also have really good spread cleave, I guess, is their niche this season. Like the Totems in Ataldazar, Council Boss in Everbloom. Uh, they're really good at that. But their AoE, I think, takes a bit of time to ramp up. So, you know, sometimes the Havoc Demon Hunter accidentally kills the pack before you're ready. That's unlucky. Um, Damage-wise, I think they're just fine. Uh, as a Mark of the Wild wielder, that sometimes is enough. Um, they do have a tendency to be a bit squishy, especially outside of bear form, and you don't really want to be in bear form as a DPS. So that is uh, one of the issues they have. So I'm leaving them here in good, not quite possible meta. Have seen some boomies making a splash, so definitely a strong spec. All right. Next, we're going to, I guess, the unlucky specs uh, of the season. Brew, I think Brew actually could be good. I just haven't seen that many people pushing on it, so I'm leaving it down here. Fury Warrior, um, I think, is not as strong as it was last season, and then last season was already not meta, so we're leaving it down here. I believe they have very strong single target and priority damage. They're just missing out uh, if you pull, like, a trash pull. <laughs> Basically, any, any real trash pull, they're going to be uh, missing damage compared to the other specs. Uh, next, we have Devastation and Ellie Shaman. Uh, these are two of the specs that are kind of just eclipsed by Mage. Like, they do worse damage, and then Mage just has the best utility in the game and a raid buff, which these guys don't have. So it's like, why would you play these when you could just play Mage? Um, Feral Druid, we talked about before. With the raid buff situation, they're just missing 10% damage compared to Moonkin. Uh, 
So that's unlucky. So we're putting them down here. Windwalker and Shadow Priest have Shadow Priest has been suffering. They've gotten massive nerfs like PI and also their tier set's not as good. Windwalker, I think, just needs a complete spec rework. Spec tree rework before they're useful. Uh, the damage is just quite low, I think, from these two. And, like, you know, they, they did recently get buffed, but those buffs are maybe, like, 25% of what they needed to be. Uh, so, yeah, those guys are feeling bad. I know a lot of mains of these two have been re-rolling. So, yeah. Uh, down here, I just haven't seen that many people playing this stuff. Uh, Sub Rogue and Arcane Mage, I think, definitely have potential. I just have not seen anyone playing them. So I will not uh, say anything that, you know, I'm not going to spread false information. I just haven't seen people playing this. But if they were meta, I think more people would be playing them anyway. So, yeah. All right. So that is uh, my opinion on most of the specs in Mythic Plus. Hopefully I answered everyone's questions. If I've offended you or you think something's wrong or you just think it's right, feel free to stop by and let me know in Twitch chat. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. And that's all. Peace out.